Yo, what is up guys, the boys Akage here with a movie for what if Naruto had time skip. You all know the drill, just sit back, relax, and let's get right into the what if. Also, check out channel memberships. There's some pretty good perks in there, so check those out. And if you like anything, make sure to join. But yeah, back to the what if. So with Naruto in this, he's been running around doing the same pranks as canon, but this time he's messed with the wrong people. Two Chunins who's frankly had enough of Naruto and his pranks. In the dead of night, Naruto ran away after throwing paint on them and couldn't contain his laughter. So he stopped on a roof of a building, started holding his side. But those same Chunins were right on his tail, but Naruto was unaware. He started clapping his face, you know, trying to get out all the laughter when he heard a voice say, Hey, look, it's that kid. And Naruto turned around and sees both of them still covered in white paint chasing after him. And he started running. So Naruto had gone through this dozens of times. So he knows a lot of hiding spots. And he jumps down into an alley and hides into a small crack in a wall where only a kid could fit. After waiting a few minutes, Naruto could hear the Chunins running overhead and one said, where did he go? So Naruto stayed there for a few more minutes before stepping out, but he came face to face with both of them. The older one said, sorry kid, you aren't hiding from an expert tracking ninja. And he started dragging Naruto into the forest. All the while, the younger Chunin said, are, are you sure about this? I thought we were just gonna reprimand him, you know, tell him that that's not a cool thing to do. The older Chunin glared at him and said he won't learn his lesson that way. We have to give him some physical punishment and he cracked his knuckles. The younger Chunin looked at Naruto kicking and punching, trying to get out of his restraints and felt bad. So they got deep enough into the forest and the older one threw Naruto against a tree stump. And he said, we'll leave him here for now. Let's report back to the Okage. Then deal with this runt. The Chunins jumped away and they were going to Hiruzen's office to say that there's nothing going on around the village while they were patrolling and that they were going off duty. Back with Naruto, he was squirming trying to get himself free but soon he got exhausted. And meanwhile, in another universe, a being hit the assassin, is praised in every universe for his power. But with such abilities, you soon find yourself without a worthy opponent. So Hit thought of an idea to enjoy fighting once more. He attained the Dragon Balls and wished for his spirit to be taken to a world where he is needed. And just like that, his body fell over dead and his spirit was transferred to a completely different universe. Not universe 7 or 8, a completely different world. The Naruto-verse. While the Chunins were on their way back to teach Naruto a lesson, they saw a bright flash of light, like lightning hitting the earth where Naruto was. This caught the attention of not only them but some passers-by. The Chunins quickly made their way over but didn't see Naruto, only the rope they used to time up with. The older Chunin turned to the younger one and said, Did you loosen them or something? And grabbed the neck of his shirt and twisted it. He said, No, why would I do that? And the older Chunin could tell he wasn't lying. They've been teammates for years now. And he angrily grunted and pushed him away. He said, Find him quick before he goes and tells the Okage. The younger one trying to be more like his pair, saying, Like the Hokage would believe him anyways, right? And that earned him a chuckle, but nothing else. The younger Chunin saw the leaves of a bush shaking unnaturally since there was no wind, and he went to check on it, but out came a little rabbit, and he bent down and said, Oh, what are you doing out here, little guy? But from above, Naruto was watching, and he jumped down and kicked the guy in the ground. The Chunin got up and said, Ha, ah, found you. But when he looked at Naruto, he looked completely different, not physically, but his demeanor was different. He was less jumpy and hyperactive and more calm and collected. 
Naruto put his hands into his pockets and said, you still sure you want to attack me? And the Chudin said, ah, oh, shut up, and took out a kunai and ran at Naruto. But right in front of his eyes, Naruto vanished from his vision and reappeared behind him, kicking him, making him face plant into the ground. The older one heard all the commotion and said out the younger one's name, but got no response. He began walking over and sees him lying on the ground, but when he got closer, he saw a kunai stabbed into his back. The Chunin got worked up and started stumbling back saying, Sh -sh show yourself. So Naruto did and he appeared a few feet in front of the Chunin and the man said, What? There's no way a kid like you could take down a Chunin. <sighs> Go play in the sand and stay out of ninja's business. And the man threw a kunai at Naruto but it went right through him. A bead of sweat ran down the Chunin's face and he said, what the hell? Is that the power of the demon or some genjutsu? The man put his hands together and said, release, but nothing happened. Naruto looked at him and said, for the crimes of intended murder, I sentence you to death. And he drew his hand back and thrusted it forward, sending a small gust of wind shooting through his chest. And his chest began caving in. The man strained for air, but collapsed on the ground, dead. And Naruto simply walked away. So we switched perspectives to Hiruzen. When those Chunins came to him, they were acting a bit strange. So he used the crystal ball to see where they were going and everything I just explained, he saw what happened. And Hiruzen is baffled by what he just saw. Naruto's skills are incredible. He would continue watching him. So. Naruto, he goes home and goes to bed almost immediately, but while sleeping, Naruto woke up in a strange place and he thought, was this a dream? He began walking around, but the corridors seemed endless and for some reason there was water on the ground, like everywhere. Then Naruto came to a massive room with walls too high for him to see the ceiling and only torches illuminating the floor, but that's when he saw in front of him a massive cage, and to him it looked empty. So Naruto began looking around and saw a person meditating in the corner of the room and he was confused. This person had a strange look to him. First off, he had purple skin and he was floating. But Naruto approached this man and before he could even greet himself, the man with his eyes closed said, So, your name is Naruto Uzumaki. You live quite a difficult life. I can tell why Shenron sent me here. Naruto was confused and said, How do you know my name and who's Shenron? The man said, I've had some time to go over your memories, Naruto. And back there, you looked like you were in a bit of a pickle, so I helped you out. Naruto looked down to his hands and said, So that's how I was able to do all those cool stuff. He nodded and said, well, just me being here gives you my personality and mindset, but my abilities don't come so easily. I've had 3000 years to master them. Remember I said Hit was renowned around the different universes because he's way older than 1000 and had more time to fight different people and of course win. So Hit said to Naruto, I'll teach you one of my moves, the rest you have to figure out on your own. So Hit explains the concept of time skip. It took Naruto a while to wrap his head around it, but now that he's more like Hit himself, he's better at learning and adapting to new information. So after that dump of information, Naruto said, I'm starting to get it. So you store time to create a separate space, a sort of parallel universe. And Hit folded his arms and said, yeah, you're catching on pretty quick, kid. So, think fast, and Hit appeared in front of Naruto and punched him in the nose, and Naruto fell to the ground groaning in pain saying, oh, I wasn't ready. Hit said get up, and Naruto still holding his bleeding nose got up and Hit said think fast, and punched Naruto in the stomach but he wasn't there, he was behind Hit, and Hit smirked and said huh, you're catching on, and Naruto said I have to when my teacher is a maniac. Hit said, just remember you have a long way to go, and he punched towards Naruto, using the same technique that he did earlier to kill the Chunin, 
and Naruto grabbed his stomach in pain and then woke up from his mindscape. Naruto was unharmed but a bit shaken up. So all throughout the day, Naruto decided to practice his time skip abilities. All the while, Hiruzen is watching Naruto appearing and disappearing randomly and he's fascinated by this. What jutsu can this even be? And it makes him immediately think of flying Raijin. So could Naruto have a more advanced version of that technique? And if that's the case, also being a Jinchuriki will be an invaluable asset to the leaf. Naruto would be insanely OP. So Hiruzen sent an Ambu to fetch Naruto to ask him a few questions. The Ambu appeared as Naruto was taking a lunch break, you know, he was having some ramen and said, Lord Hokage requests your presence. And Naruto was wondering what Lord Third even wanted with him. So he finished his cup ramen and followed the Ambu back to his office. There, Hiruzen sent all his personal Ambu members outside to, you know, stand guard. And he began pacing around his office and said, Naruto, have you been experiencing anything different lately? Maybe some sort of ability? And Naruto was confused how Lord Third would ever know about that and said, no. And he raised an eyebrow saying, really? So, he showed Naruto an image of the two dead shooting and said, have you ever seen these two before? And Naruto remained composed and with a straight face said, never in my life. <laughs> he was and sat back in his chair and said, well, I got reports of villagers seeing you walking out of the forest where those two were found. So I just wanted to question you to make them happy. But trust me, you're not in any trouble. Anyways, how have you been, Naruto? And Naruto, for the following questions, he just answers shortly and brief, like, good, alright, okay. He doesn't go in depth in anything. And soon, here is and just let him go back home. So right now, Naruto is 6, so 2 years later, at 8 years old, is when he first enters the academy. Naruto walks in the class, you know, with the drip, he got some, you know, the same color scheme that Hit has going on. The black jacket with a high collar, matching blue pants with purple accents, and everyone in class is surprised with Naruto's change. He seems like a whole different person, really. So Naruto went to sit by a window at the back of the class, and he's just there waiting. Meanwhile, Ino and Sakura and some other girls in the class couldn't take their eyes off Sasuke-kun, their one and only. Earlier that day, Sakura and Ino made a bento box for him and couldn't wait to give him at lunch. But soon, Iruka comes into class and of course he introduces himself as their new teacher and can't wait to see their progress throughout the year. And their first step towards that is a quick test outside and everyone was excited they finally get to do real ninja tricks and jutsus and have actual tools because for years they've been using paper ninja stars. So they rushed outside leaving Sasuke, Naruto, Iruka and Shikamaru behind who slowly followed them. So once everyone was outside, Iruka started explaining everything they needed to do. First, an accuracy test, and Iruka handed out to everyone kunais and had them line up shoulder to shoulder and had targets in front of each of them. And on three, they should throw it at the center of it. And Iruka said three, and everyone did. Shikamaru, Sasuke, and Ino were the closest to the bullseye while Naruto actually hit it. And seeing this, again, his classmates were surprised. Is this even Naruto? The troublemaker? Like, no way. I mean, they haven't seen him for two years, but can someone change this much in that amount of time? Meanwhile, Sakura was staring daggers at Naruto. She's thinking, why is he trying so hard to be cool? He'll never be like my Sasuke-kun. So, Iruka collects all the ninja tools and puts the targets away, then draws a large circle into the ground and said, your next test will be sparring. Anyone who steps out of this circle will automatically lose, but we're going until the other person submits or I think they've gone far enough. So Iruka starts looking over his register with all the names and starts drawing lines to each people, pinning them against each other. 
Then Iruka announced the first spar, Shikamaru vs Shino, which as per usual Shikamaru forfeits because it would be too much of a drag. Next is Naruto Uzumaki vs Sasuke Uchiha. While walking up there, all of Sasuke's fangirls were cheering his name and Sasuke wasn't his usual emo self because the Uchiha massacre hasn't happened yet. So he was waving to all the fangirls and this made their hearts almost beat out of their chest and faint. So Sasuke stood across from Naruto and as Iruka said begin, he ran at him. Naruto just stood there with his hands in his pockets and using just his physical abilities alone. He dodged all of Sasuke's punches but one of them were going to land and Naruto grabbed his fist and started twisting his entire arm until he screamed out and Naruto let go. Naruto still had an emotionless expression and Sasuke was getting angry. He slowly did hand signs and thought, I can finally use the jutsu that big brother Itachi showed me. He said fire style, fireball jutsu. Sasuke shot out a massive fireball at Naruto but Naruto time skipped a very small amount to the left of the fireball, dodging it, which had Sasuke and the other students shocked. Naruto said, you know Sasuke, with Itachi as your brother, I thought you would be a decent fight, but you don't even have your Sharingan. And Naruto ran at Sasuke quickly and kicked him in the chest, sending him out of the ring. Immediately Sakura ran over to help Sasuke while Ino stared in awe of Naruto, such strength but she was brought out of her daze when Sakura shouted for Ino to help her to take you know Sasuke to the office because he's too heavy. So Ino quickly ran over to help Sakura and while taking him, Sakura began berating Naruto with insults calling him a nobody and that he's just trying to be cool like Sasuke, something he'll never be able to do. But Naruto just stood there, took it and walked off. And while on their way to the infirmary, Sasuke said, let me go. And he pushed the two of them off and said, I can walk myself. Sakura ran up to him again and said, if there's anything I can do for you, Sasuke, just tell me. And he said, just leave me alone. And started walking to the infirmary, holding his chest in pain. Naruto and the rest of the class were given some lunch time, which Naruto spent outside by himself. In class, Ino went to sit down next to Sakura because, you know, they're basically best friends. But she put down some scrolls saying Ino is the reason that Sasuke is treating her this way and she doesn't want to be her friend anymore. And Ino was offended. She said, like anyone would want to be friends with someone with a forehead as big as yours. And she stormed off. The entire classroom was like, Damn! And Sakura felt embarrassed and covered her head on the desk. Ino found her way outside with a bento box that she was going to give Sasuke, but decided to eat it herself. And while outside, she saw Naruto sitting on a log in some shade. And that fight earlier made her want to, you know, get to know Naruto more. She felt as if she didn't even know him. She thought she did, but that fight completely proved every assumption she made of him wrong. And she didn't hold the same prejudice as some others since Inoichi sees the role of Jinchuriki as something to be praised because life as one is extremely difficult already. So Ino walked up to Naruto and said, uh, why are you out here by yourself? As she sat down next to him, Naruto shrugged his shoulders and said, it's a peaceful place to meditate. And Ino in her head is like, meditate? What the, what the heck? But she's like, oh, cool, I guess. And she starts eating. Ino realized Naruto wasn't eating anything and said, do you want any food? I've got plenty. And Naruto just shook his head no and closed his eyes to start meditating. Meanwhile, Ino just ate in silence for the rest of lunch. So, Iruka began calling everyone into class after a few minutes and Ino nudged Naruto that they need to both go inside. So, they do. And as the years goes on, this would be a sort of daily routine for the two of them. After the Uchiha massacre, Sasuke became more distant and not even giving his fangirls a glance and Sakura was not happy, blaming his sudden change in behavior on Naruto and Ino. 
why well sakura doesn't have a clear reason she just acts out of emotion most of the time but apart from that, during the five year gap, Naruto did acquire a new ability from all of his training. We last left off with Naruto coming off the five year time skip to start the graduation exams. So he gets up, he has a quick bite to eat, you know, gets ready for the day. And this time he actually gets something nutritious, not just ramen, because Hit keeps telling Naruto to eat better because he'll be able to live longer and grow stronger. So he just wants to get hit off his back so he complies. So Naruto tried out some of the other food Konoha had to offer and they're actually pretty good. No wonder Choji is like obsessed with barbecue grill. So Naruto heads out and while walking to school he passes Ino's flower shop. And Ino who's just about to get off her shift because she works in the morning before schools. She sees Naruto walking by and she frantically rushes back inside and gets herself ready for school. Inoichi and Ino's mom are watching her and thinking like she must be excited for her graduation or something. So when Ino was about to go out of the door, Inoichi said, well, we'll see you at school, Ino. And she paused for a minute and said, wait, wait, what? And Ino's mom looked at her husband and said, didn't I tell you to tell her? Inoichi, feeling a bit embarrassed, scratched the back of his head and said, well, my bad. Hiruzen is making the graduation exam a sort of exhibition this year to highlight the talent of young students. Ino wasn't too bothered by this, she actually thought it was a good idea, but ran off to catch up with Naruto. And while walking, Naruto could sense Ino running from a mile away, and she tried pushing him but he just sidesteps her and Ino quickly saves herself from falling, like face planting, and says, damn it, I missed again. And Naruto says, you try this every day, it won't work. But Ino looked confident and said, one of these days, I'll finally get you. And Naruto stares at her and says, whatever, we have to get to school. So the duo get to their classes and sit next to each other at the back of the class since, you know, Sakura basically kicked Ino out of her seat. So after a, f after a while, you know, they're just talking, making up time until Iruka comes into class. And he's really excited and said, well guys, it's finally time to show what you're made of. And this year, members of the civilian council, clan heads, and the Hokage himself will be watching your performance. So go out there and do your best. Everyone was actually a bit nervous, but this is what they've been training for. So during his time in the academy, Hit has been teaching Naruto about not only his powers, but the world he once lived him of the different friends he made, the difficult decisions that shaped who he was today. But the most important thing that Hit told Naruto is it's about how people see you. For example, when the stone shinobi like thinks of Minato, they think of this badass that wiped out an entire army. But when Kushino thinks of Minato, he's just her loving husband. And in that same light, Naruto waited until everyone left class when he did what Guy would call a dynamic entry, using his key manipulation to fly over the arena where everyone is watching and use this key to make a purple glow around his body, making Naruto seem like a god, really. And when people from his class came out, they were entranced by Naruto's display. And when he landed, Ino ran up to Naruto asking, what was that? But Naruto remains silent since the Hokage and other high ranking members were watching and he wants to keep up that stoic appearance. So Ino huffed and folded her arms and said, I hate when you do that. Meanwhile, Hiruzen, the clan heads, they were all impressed to say the least. To the point of confusion really, like how is this even possible with Chakra? So Iruka went up and introduced all the students. After he did, he said, first, we'll be having the moving accuracy test. So targets are placed all over the schoolyard and one by one, students have to go around and hit them without stopping. And if you do stop, you automatically lose. So students went and some of the, you know, background characters stopped and got disqualified while other students did extremely well, like Sasuke, Shikamaru, Kiba. They all went through and hit the targets without stopping. But Naruto is just built different. He went through and hit a bullseye on all the targets and had the fastest time, impressing everyone in attendance. 
So next up was the sparring matches and Iruka went with the same group he did all those years ago and everyone goes and have a light spar, you know, they don't take it too seriously and Iruka announces the winner for each of the matches. And the third pairing, Naruto versus Sasuke, something Sasuke was preparing for since the day he lost 5 years ago. Sakura wanted to support Sasuke, you know, scream his name, you know, you have to, you gotta support Sasuke-kun. But with the Hokage hair, she wanted, you know, to be on her best behavior. So once both students were ready, Iruka shouted, Begin! And as he did, Sasuke weaved hand signs because he wasn't playing around this time. He said, Fire style, Phoenix Blossom! And he shot out six fireballs and Hiruzen was impressed. And so was everyone else. Who would have known such a high rank jutsu can be wielded by a Genin? Naruto seeing this ran at the fireballs and he said in his mind, I hope this works and jumps into them, shocking the crowd like Hiruzen was about to stop the match because Naruto could have seriously been injured but Naruto came out on the other side without even a single piece of clothes singed and Sasuke was like how does he keep getting around my attacks and Sasuke said I've had it, I've been saving this one for my brother but I have to use it on you and he said fire style ring of death and Sasuke made a ring of fire completely surrounding the fighting area and as he was about to enclose it and just completely engulf Naruto in flames without any chance of escape, he took a deep breath because I mean this is a A-rank jutsu, it's gonna take a lot of chakra and with the little he has, he could potentially kill himself from chakra depletion. But Sasuke wasn't the only one plotting an attack, Naruto, he said, I think it's about time I use that technique. And from his mind skate, Hit laughed and said, That kid barely got through those fireballs and he thinks he's mastered it? Huh, it's gonna take a lot longer than that. So back with Naruto fighting, he decided to go on the offense and said, Sasuke, let me show you how different we are. And to everyone, Naruto was completely gone. Meanwhile, Naruto froze time itself. In this frozen state, he felt an immense pressure on his body and Hit said to him, this technique was not made to be used by humans, so it may be impossible for you to move. Naruto chuckled and wiped away the sweat and he said, if anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be me. And he got up and went behind Sasuke and time continued. Naruto whispered to Sasuke, behind you. And Sasuke turned around in shock and Naruto knees him in the stomach, sending a massive amount of ki coursing through his body. And Sasuke fell to the ground in pain, but through sheer determination he got up, but this was a mistake. Naruto punched him in his chest with ki going through him again and Sasuke fell to the ground. This time, he wasn't getting up. And Naruto was announced the winner. The clan heads looked at each other wondering what type of jutsu or ability Naruto was using this has never been seen before and even it was some form of the flying raijin that's done with seals so they would have probably seen it. So unless Naruto has not only mastered but made it the fourth Hokage's jutsu even better, this kid could be a prodigy far greater than the likes of Kakashi or Itachi or Minato himself. So after all the rounds, Naruto was declared the Rookie of the Year and some members of the Civilian Council were whispering amongst themselves, saying how the QB must have cheated somehow but they couldn't do anything about it or even prove it. So after that was said and done, everyone returned to class and Iruka tells them to come tomorrow where they will be assigned to a team and meet their new senses. So not much happens between that time and now, so we'll just skip to the next day. Back in class, the teams were announced. First, Team 8, Kiba, Hinata and Shino. Team 10, Shikamaru, Choji and Sakura. And Team 7, Naruto, Ino and Sasuke. Hearing these teams, Ino couldn't be happier that she was on a team with Naruto, but Sakura didn't share the same sentiment. She was as red as a lobster. Her anger had finally boiled over and she went on a massive rant about how, you know, her and only her should be on a team with Sasuke and Naruto and Ino don't even deserve to breathe the same air as her or Sasuke, calling them vile creatures. And once Naruto had had enough, he chopped her in the back of the neck, knocking her out, 
and the entire class just thanked Naruto for, for saving them, you know, the airfall. So as Team 7 waited, the senses for the other team arrived, but they're just there waiting and waiting and waiting. But finally, two hours later, Kakashi arrives and he walks into class and sees his team just sitting there patiently. And he walks in and immediately tries apologizing, saying how a black cat crossed his path and he had to walk around the village one more time. So Naruto wasn't having it and he got up and said, if you aren't going to take this seriously, then I'll just be asked to be put on another team. And Kakashi was thinking, okay, this kid seems like a handful. So he instructs them to meet him on top of the roof. So they get there and Kakashi says, you know, how about you guys introduce yourselves? So Sasuke goes first and he says the same thing, Sasuke Uchiha. And he doesn't particularly like or dislike anything and what he has is not a dream because he will make it a reality. He will want to restore his clan to get revenge on his dead clan and three, take down a certain someone while glancing at Naruto. After was Ino who said her likes were flowers and she dislikes rude customers. Her goal is to protect those closest to her. Naruto says sort of the same thing as Sasuke, he doesn't like or dislike anything and doesn't particularly want to do anything, just train and get stronger. Kakashi can sort of relate to Naruto because after the death of both his teammates, he felt the same way, somewhat even to this day. So after all their introductions, Kakashi tells them to meet him at the training ground tomorrow and not to eat. So Naruto goes home immediately and that night he enters his mindscape and Hit is there meditating like usual. So Naruto approaches him and says, don't you have something to say to me? And Hit raises his eyebrow, well he actually doesn't have an eyebrow, just raises where his eyebrow would be <laughs> and said, like what? And Naruto replies back, he's like, oh I don't know, maybe I was wrong and Hit said I wasn't wrong about anything. You still can't enter the parallel dimension for very long and didn't you see the state of your body after you exited it? And Naruto crossed his arms and said, oh, whatever, some of these days I'll catch up to you. He said, sure, if you live a thousand years. And Naruto was about to say a comeback but he woke up out of his mindscape. So he gets ready for his first day as a member of Team 7. He goes to the training ground and while running there, he sees Ino and Sasuke waiting and once he finally reaches, Ino greets Naruto and the two chill and wait for Kakashi to finally arrive. And Naruto's thinking, not this again, this guy's gonna take another three hours to come. But it was like Naruto's word yesterday really said something to Kakashi that he really should be taking it more seriously. So he actually comes on time, I mean not super on time, but he does come within like five minutes after Naruto. So. He goes on to explain the bell test and says the first two to grab a bell win and the other goes back to the academy and gets tied to the stump and has to watch the others eat. After his explanation, Ino asks, wait, weren't we already put on a team so what's the point of the test? And Kakashi says, well, you have to find that out. So they begin and Ino and Sasuke rush into the woods but Naruto stayed out in the open and Kakashi seeing this says, oh, he really thinks he can take me. Well, I'll entertain it. And Kakashi rushed Naruto to see what he's made of. And the two start blocking each other's blows and Naruto is putting up a good fight. Then Kakashi was ready to finish this and threw a fast punch at Naruto that not even a Genin would be able to dodge. But Naruto wasn't there anymore and he appeared next to him, punching Kakashi in the side, sending a massive amount of ki through his body. And Kakashi groaned in pain and thought, what the hell is this kid? And he looked at Naruto and that blank expression, he's only seen that in the Ambu where hardened killers were. And that show of little emotion, Kakashi said to himself, I have to take this seriously. And he pulled off his headband and Sasuke ran out saying, You're not gonna take my spotlight, Naruto. And he fired a fireball at Kakashi who dodged this pretty easily and gets into a taijutsu fight with Sasuke. Now having his Sharingan out, this fight was easier than ever. Sasuke's goal to outshine Naruto made him completely oblivious of the fact that Kakashi even had a Sharingan. 
But after he lost, Naruto used this as a distraction to get behind him and strike Kakashi over and over in rapid succession and soon Kakashi succumbed to his injuries and fell to the ground. A couple minutes later, he wakes up and is tied to a stump while the trio eats some sushi and Kakashi is just impressed by Naruto. He can't even be mad. This kid really is something else. So after that day, Kakashi went to visit Hiruzen to tell him how the bell test went and this was no surprise to Hiruzen hearing all of what Kakashi is saying and the two talk about Naruto's abilities and what it could be. I mean obviously they were completely off because their main hypothesis was that it was some sort of um, Flying Raijin spin-off. So for the following weeks, the team did D-rank mission after D-rank mission which made the members of Team 7 annoyed. They had to save cats all day, pick up trash, help elderly people. It wasn't fulfilling, they couldn't push themselves to the limit and they made this evidently clear to Kakashi. So when they went to get their next mission, Kakashi brought up how his team, you know, they would like a harder mission and Hiruzen actually had one already lined up, he was gonna give it to them anyways. So this made Kakashi actually surprised, he doesn't normally do this cause there's a requirement to how many D ranks you have to do to start doing C ranks. But this was a simple escort mission and Hiruzen explains how they will be escorting a bridge builder called Tazuna to the land of waves. I mean it wasn't the danger team 7 was looking for but at least they get to go outside of the village. So Hiruzen called Tazuna in and he's a drunken mess, he's slurring his words, calling people names, you know he's arguing with the Ambu. So Hiruzen just tells them to bring him outside because this is just an embarrassment. And team 7 thought that they must have their work cut out for them, just seeing Tazuna in that state. So the next day rolls around and they meet Tazuna at the village gate and this time he's not a drunk mess, he's sober and profusely apologizes to the team and says that you know that wasn't his best look. So now with everyone in a good mood they set out to the land of waves. Once they're about 20 minutes of walking from the village, Naruto and Kakashi notice a puddle up ahead and can already tell what it is. And as the group walks by, the two demon brothers jumped out with poison tipped claws, but in the blink of an eye they were taken down, so quickly in fact that Tazuna didn't even realize they were being attacked. So Naruto restrains the brothers and Kakashi just keeps getting impressed by his ability to say the least. And he wants to ask Naruto how it works, you know, get the secret behind this, but right now he has to deal with the brothers. So Kakashi takes over and throws the demon brothers against the tree and asks who sent them. But predictably they didn't want to say anything and by now Kakashi would have been starting to cut off fingers because Kakashi has been trained from this in the Ambu so he knows how to do interrogation and how to properly torture someone for information which he would have learned from Ibiki. So Hakashi doesn't want to show his team this soon the true reality of being a ninja and everything it entails so he swiftly kills the two and says to his team I want everyone on high alert because more ninjas with the same intention as these two might be coming. Got it? And the team said yes sensei. So they continue down the path and the more they travel the closer they get to the land of waves which is known for its frequent fogs but they, when they enter this one, it's thick and I'm not just talking two C's, like six at least, to the point where they can't even see far ahead of them. And then the sound of something flying through the air was heard and Kakashi shouted, duck! And everyone did and as they do, the executioner's blade comes flying over their head, lodging itself into a tree. And a ninja stood atop it and he said, who would have thought I'd get to fight Kakashi the copy ninja? This'll be fun. Kakashi looked up to the man standing on the sword and soon was regretting taking this mission. This was definitely not a C rank mission, A or B rank at least, because they had to fight one of the seven deadly swordsmen of the mist, Zabaza Momochi wielding the executioner's blade. So we last left off with Team 7 encountering Zabuza Mamochi on their way to the Land of Waves. And Zabuza is looking at Team 7, more specifically Kakashi, and he said, So, I get to fight the copy ninja. This is gonna be fun. 
Naruto and the others were ready to fight but Kakashi held out his hand to stop them and then turned around and said, just watch, I've got this, and he lifted up his headband revealing the Sharingan. Kakashi ran in to fight Zabuza and they started going in an all out brawl, going from hand to hand combat to Kakashi having to use the metal plates on the back of his gloves to stop Zabuza's sword. And he was going all out until Kakashi managed to knock the sword out of Zabuza's hand but that didn't stop him from fighting. This just turned into a jutsu battle and with Kakashi's copying ability with his Sharingan, he just kept copying all of Zabuza's abilities and they end up cancelling each other's out. And Kakashi would end up in the water prison just like in canon. And this, all this time, Naruto and the rest of Team 7, they're planning, thinking how they can help. And when they finally see this, they're ready to go into action. Naruto takes the lead on this one and runs straight to Zabuza, who made water clones to protect him, but this was really nothing to Naruto. He ran at the clones and they attacked him simultaneously, but he just ran right through them and Zabuza and Kakashi are thinking if these are illusion clones, not that Naruto went intangible. And Zabuza, like he's the most confused, he's sure those are physical water clones. But while he's thinking about what just happened, Naruto began skipping forward and punched him in the gut, causing Zabuza to fall onto his knees in pain and broke the water prison. Ino jumped in and took Kakashi back to the group and Naruto jumped back and said, Sasuke now! And Sasuke, he's saying in his head, don't tell me what to do. And he weaved hand signs for a great fireball jutsu. And as it was about to hit Zabuza, he got Senbone thrown into his neck. And he fell over dead, also dodging the fireball. The whole team was confused what just happened, but that's when Haku decided to show himself. And he came out and explained that he was sent to retrieve Zabuza because of the amount of valuable information within his body. And Kakashi was really suspect of this behavior because normally they would outright burn the body as soon as they're there to, you know, not allow the information to get out to other ninjas. And Kakashi is thinking that, well, he did kill Zabuza and even if he weren't a tracking ninja, they aren't in any shape to keep fighting because he is just completely ran out because of his Sharingan usage and he doesn't want to put his team into unnecessary danger. So he tells Naruto to stand down and they watch as Zabuza gets carried away by Haku. So with the threat taken care of, Naruto and the rest of Team 7 get ready to go on into the Land of Waves. So they arrive at a dock and someone is there who takes them into a boat and carries them over to the mainland and they go through a lot of mist and Tazuna starts telling them about the history of the village and how that it's basically known for having this much mist and when it finally clears they could see the slums of what the land of waves has turned into because of Gato and his men. And speaking of Gato and his men, they can see from shore that some of his men are like roughing up some of the kids in town. And Naruto, like his blood is just boiling watching this. And so is Ino's and Kakashi's, while Sasuke, he's just indifferent to be honest. So they arrive at the dock and they thank the fisherman for, you know, carrying them over. And as they're walking to Tazuna's house, Naruto stops and he just can't stop thinking about what those men were doing and Ino turns around and sees Naruto and she just walks up to him and says don't do anything stupid I'll just tell them you lost something on the boat and you need to go get it okay so Naruto he nods and he turns around to go back to the sort of city area it's not really a city but the main area the more busiest part of the town and when Naruto gets there, he sees the thugs, you know, they're roughing up kids, they're taking their monies, they're going around to stalls, just taking the fruits off the stands and starts eating them. And Naruto, he's just disgusted by this, like how can someone be just this cruel to people? So Naruto walks up to the thugs and he said, hey, what do you think you're doing? And the thugs look at each other, then back to Naruto, and then start laughing. And the merchant that they just stole from, they're just like, kid, get leave these guys aren't to be messed with naruto just hearing the hope being gone from these townspeople's voice it just makes him even angrier he reaches around to his back and takes out a kunai and then he disappears from everyone's vision and reappears behind the two and both their heads drop to the ground 
and everyone's looking they're in shock they're like what did you just do and naruto he didn't say anything and simply said take back your goods and they had some money on them so take that too and naruto starts walking off the merchant that they stole from before you know naruto killed them he ran naruto down just to thank him he was kneeling down thanking naruto basically at his feet and naruto said get up so the guy did and naruto looked at him and took out the kunai that he just killed those men with and he handed it to him and said don't stop fighting and he walked off the man just stood there at the blood covered kunai and back to naruto and just thinking what this kid even is he is their savior and he doesn't even know his name so naruto makes it back to tazuna's house and when he opens the door he sees everyone around the table they're all eating good bro i'm telling you tazuna's daughter's cooking mm, i would kill for that to be honest so naruto goes around the table and he gets a plate of food and while they're eating you know they're having fun tazuna is telling his daughter about everything that team 7 has done for them and he is in their debt and inari he's around the corner and he's listening in he was about to come around talking about oh they're fake you know they can't do anything against gato but hearing his grandfather's recollection of everything that they've done he's actually starting to appreciate them because really and truly if team 7 wasn't around tazuna would frankly be dead so during their stay at tazuna's house uh, Kakashi would teach Ino and Sasuke tree walking and water walking and actually Naruto would be teaching Kakashi a thing or two mainly showing Kakashi how his abilities actually work because he is their team leader so it only makes sense you know for him to know and also because Naruto is used to being at very high speeds like when he skips forward in time consecutively he's moving really fast so he has experience to show Kakashi how he can improve his aim with the Chidori because Kakashi has stated that it is very hard to control it or to even aim it. So these lessons would come in handy for what is to come next. So the team, they're at the bridge protecting Tazuna and his other workers and they're, you know, patrolling the bridge, they're walking around. And that's when suddenly the same type of fog appeared covering the entire bridge and this is a thick fog and it moved in so quickly it's really unnatural so almost immediately the team knew what was to come Zabuza came into view and he said where's that damn kid I want some revenge and Kakashi said you'd have to go through me first Zabuza chuckled and rushed Kakashi meanwhile Naruto and the others could hear the fight going on from a distance but had their own enemy to deal with Haku ran at Sasuke who promptly dodges and tries counter-attacking but Haku is way too fast. This time Haku knew what Naruto and his team could do and he wasn't going to hold back. He again went for Sasuke but faster this time and threw Senbon at him, missing his vital spots but he fell over unconscious. And Naruto seeing this has had enough. He said you may be fast but what are you going to do with someone faster than time itself? and Naruto completely stops time. This time, he's sort of moving freely. It still takes a lot of energy to do this, but not as much as it did before since he's been practicing. So Naruto moves towards Haku and he restrains her with some ropes he found from the construction site Tazuna was working on. And when Naruto resumed time, he chopped Haku in the neck, knocking her out. Meanwhile, Kakashi took care of Zabuza with a Chidori to the chest and that was pretty much it. And after that, finally, Gato and his men emerge and Gato starts taunting the dead bodies of uh, Zabuza and Haku. And remember, Haku isn't dead, she's just unconscious, but she's awake to hear all of this and she breaks through her bindings and rushes Gato and his men basically doing what Zabuza did in canon but completely massacring them without just a single thought. So after this, Haku allowed herself to be taken in by the Leaf Village as a prisoner because she really has no purpose apart from Zabuza and he's dead so she can't really do anything about that. So we fast forward to the next day and you see Team 7 along with Haku as a prisoner and they're on their way to the Leaf Village. They will arrive within like less than a day 
and they take Haku to Ibiki where he would imprison him. Before we move on, just quickly, just don't be in the comments being like, oh, he called Haku a girl. Bro, do you hear how much times I said he, him, bro? Just chill out. Okay, just had to mention that because in God Key, people are ready to roast me at the stakes because I called Haku her or she like once. But anyway, the team, they go to Hiruzen and they tell them about the mission details and how that this simple C rank mission was a far from it. It was at least B, maybe A rank because they encountered Zabaza, which is in the bingo books. So let's just say Team 7 was paid handsomely for the mistaken rankings or, you know, Tazuna's lie. So a day after they returned, Kakashi would call them to the training grounds and once the team is all there, he would tell them about the tuning exams and how it's in two weeks and you know, if they would want to go. Of course, none of them refused because who would pass up becoming a tuning? So Kakashi leaves the three to go inform Hiruzen of this and you know, they're on their own and Sasuke goes off leaving Naruto and Ino and Naruto was going off as well but Ino grabbed his hand and said, please Naruto, can you train me? I don't know where to start. And Sensei isn't any help either. Naruto, I mean, he didn't see a problem with it, so he agreed. And the two started training. So over the three weeks, Naruto would have made Ino do the basic conditioning training. Stuff you would see Lee doing and has her practice all her clan abilities, then get into elemental jutsu. But with just three weeks, they didn't really get far into that. For Naruto, he practiced more of going into his parallel universe and getting a better control of Ki. And we can't forget, you know, Sasuke. He didn't have any guidance while Naruto had a over 4,000 year old purple alien training him. So Sasuke didn't make as much progress, but still, he got a few fire jutsu under his belt. So, the day before the tuning exams, and Naruto told Ino to rest up, and she actually suggested they get a bite to eat together. And to Ino, you know, this was their first date. So, she wanted Naruto to say yes, and, you know, he did. He didn't really see it as anything. Naruto just wanted some sustenance. So, they get to the ramen plug, you know, Teyuchi, best ramen in the entire Naruto world. And they sit down, and Teyuchi's like, oh, Naruto, it's nice to see you. And he says, who's this young lady next to you? Naruto just says, a friend, and Ino hearing this was sort of conflicted. One, Naruto has never referred to her as a friend before, so that's a plus, I guess. But, you know, she wants to be more than that. And Ino just drops her head, and when Ayame brings over her bowl of ramen, she says, don't worry, Naruto is an idiot when it comes to things like this. He'll come around, and this reassures Ino. So they get their stomachs filled and after just head home to rest for the exams tomorrow. So the next day rolls around and Team 7 is at the academy ready to go in for the tuning exams, the first stage. And as soon as they walk in, they are met with a crowd of Genins trying to get into the exam hall. But Ino actually realized and told the rest of her team that that sign is a Genjutsu. And when they look at it, they also realize as well. So they head upstairs and as they're about to enter the room that they were supposed to in the first place, Lee stops them and asks to duel Sasuke. And Sasuke is wondering what he wants to do with him because Naruto is clearly the strongest in the group. So Sasuke accepts and Lee starts telling him about the rules on how he can't use Jutsu and only Taijutsu which to me still makes zero sense. How is that testing yourself? You have trained your whole life for Taijutsu, while Sasuke, he barely trains, yet you only want him to use that. That is so unfair in my opinion, but hey, Lee, I guess he has something to get at, I don't know. So this fight goes basically to canon with Lee completely rocking Sasuke the entire time. And he hasn't even unlocked his Sharingan, so there's no him copying Lee's technique. Sasuke just got beat down. So shamefully, Sasuke walked away from the match to his team and they entered the first stage of the tuning exams. And as they do, they walk into this room and it's completely surrounded by people from other villages and they're staring them down. So Team 7 find a corner to, you know, wait in 
Meanwhile, Gara and his teammates, they're watching Naruto and Gara could sense something deep within Naruto, but he couldn't really place his finger on it. But soon enough, Ibiki comes into the room and instructs everyone to, you know, go into the other room to take a seat. And it was sort of a classroom setting. So once everyone sits down, he starts explaining the rules of this stage, saying how that if you're caught cheating, you are automatically lose. You're going to be thrown out. But after Ibiki outlined all of these rules, Naruto is thinking that this really isn't a test of your wit. It's a test of how you can steal information. And that must mean that there are people around with the answers already. So Naruto, I mean, he doesn't really need to steal. He basically knows all the answers. So as Ibiki starts, he starts writing down everything he knows. And by, by the 20 minute mark, Naruto is done. Like this was a pretty hard paper, but with Naruto's expertise and experience, he basically has all of it answered. So at the 40 minute mark, Ibiki tells everyone to drop their papers and he starts saying that there's the 10th question. But if anyone fails it, they will be barred from taking the tuning exams ever again. And hearing this possibility, you know, some people they've trained way too hard to lose from just one question. So they decide to walk and a lot of people walk. At least half of the remaining students just left and Ibiki, he turns to the you know people who stayed and he said, well, there is no 10th question, you all pass. But before they could get even the slightest bit of time to celebrate, Uncle comes crashing through the window, sending glass flying across the room and onto Ibiki. Ibiki, he was he was mad at this point, but he just brushed off the glass and said, Ugh, they're all yours. Uncle looked over the class and said, huh, Ibiki, you went easy on them this year. There's like 10 or 15 more than usual. But at this point, she was talking to herself because Ibiki, he was already on his way home. Bro was tired. So anyways, Uncle tells all of them to meet her at the gate of the force of death. So they all do. They all head over and while walking there, Naruto realized one of these grass shinobis acting really, really weird. Like he's licking his lips, just not something a normal person would do, but I guess they do it different over in the grass village, so Naruto doesn't really pay any attention to that. So once they get there, Uncle explains everything they would need to know to win in her, you know, part of the training exams. Basically outlining the whole scroll system with the heaven and earth scrolls and you need a pair of them Then go to the center of the force of death where there's a building So enough of the explanation Anko Instructs them to get their scrolls and wait at their assigned gate and they do so after a countdown Team 7 rushes into the force of death and Naruto immediately can sense someone close which is unusual because they literally just started so there should be no one this close to them. So Naruto and Team 7 went to check it out. Once they get to the trees above this team, they see that it's a team from the Sound Village. And Naruto is wondering what they're up to. And while they're watching, someone else is watching them from a distance. And that's when Naruto could sense them also. Naruto rushed over to his teammates and pushed them out of the way when a massive snake came crashing down, breaking the branches they were on. And this alerted Team Dosu, you know, the Sound Village team that they were watching. And they realized that they were being spied on. So Team Dosu, the snake, and a mysterious figure in the background came to attack Team 7. So last time we left off with Team 7 who was stuck between a rock and a hard place. This massive snake came crashing down onto the branch they were on, but they jumped off in time. And this alerted Team Dosu to their presence and they immediately knew the snake was Orochimaru's doing. So their targets must be close. Naruto, Ino, and Sasuke are hiding in a higher branch, you know, at the, closer to the top of the tree, when Naruto says to them, trust me, you two need to run. I'll take care of the team below us. Sasuke and Ino were not about to leave Naruto, both for, I mean, very different reasons. Ino actually cared about Naruto, like if he would get hurt, 
while Sasuke just didn't want to be saved by this numbskull, but Naruto said this isn't about me and he reached into his back pocket and took out the scrolls and handed it to Ino and said to the both of them, win and I'll distract them and catch up later. Ino said but and Naruto quickly cut her off and said just go and Naruto jumped down to team Dosu. Ino still was reluctant to leave but Sasuke said let's go or I'm leaving you to die. So they both went off to get the scroll they needed. Meanwhile, they were being watched. This mysterious figure licked his lips and said, So my prey's coming right to me. What luck. Sasuke was jumping from branch to branch and he had the feeling like he was being watched. And Sasuke stopped for a second and looked around while Ina was wondering like, what he was looking for. But then from behind him, Orochimaru's neck extended right towards his neck. But before that, let's check in with Naruto. He jumped down and Dosu, Zaku and Kin were ready to attack. Naruto smiled and said, You three will serve me well as training dummies. Naruto rushed Kin but Zaku jumped in and shot a combination of air pressure and sound waves out of his palms and Naruto simply jumped over this attack since it was focused but before he could counter Dosu jumped into the air next to him and tried hitting Naruto but he blocked with his arm. But Dosu's abilities work even if he didn't get a proper hit and the sound waves from his massive glove reverberated through Naruto's arm amplifying its effects and Naruto's eardrums ruptured and he fell to the ground. Dosu laughed and said, you aren't so tough after all and went to slam his massive glove into Naruto's chest but it hit the ground causing a massive dust cloud. And when it settled, Naruto was gone. He wasn't on the ground anymore. But from behind him, Dosu heard, That's a neat trick, but it's not effective against me. And Naruto punched Dosu in the back twice, using his near master of hits precision uh, pressure point attack. He dropped Dosu to the ground without a challenge. As for the other two, they were hesitant to attack Naruto but rushed in anyways and the fight ended the same as Dosu's, Naruto using his pressure point technique to take them down. So he moved on to catch up with his team. So back with Sasuke and Ino, a neck extended to bite Sasuke on the neck and the head sunk its teeth into Sasuke's neck like a vampire and Sasuke screamed in pain and Naruto arrived and sees this and runs to Sasuke to try and help him but the head recoils and returns to the body. Naruto gives chase but as he was catching up he just found a pile of snakes slithering away and Naruto shouted damn it and punched a tree out of anger. So he returns to his group and you know Sasuke he's on the ground in pain so they take him to a safe place to rest and while he's you know doing that because it's secure nobody will probably ever find him they go out and find a team to get the other scroll they needed and with a forest just filled with genins Naruto just pieced up a genin team and swiped their scroll. So once they returned, luckily Sasuke was still unconscious so Naruto picks him up and the team heads to the center of the forest of death. They make it without any obstacle and open both the scrolls and from it a smoke cloud appeared and Kakashi said hey what's up. So they tell Kakashi about what happened to Sasuke and Kakashi immediately knew what was going on. This was serious and he said okay don't tell anyone about who you saw. I'll take care of it. And he went away with Sasuke. So Kakashi would seal the curse mark but went to inform Hiruzen of Orochimaru's presence in the village as well. And hearing this, he sent out a fleet of Ambu on a secret mission to capture Orochimaru. So Team 7 waited in the manner for the other teams to arrive and while the team was just sitting around, Team Gara arrived and they were shocked to see a team beat them there. And this made Gara even more curious about what Naruto could do. So they wait and by the next day all the teams were there and they went into the arena and Hiruzen announced to you know everyone there that there were that literally too many people passed and they need to bring that number down so the preliminary exams were to be put in effect. So first up was Naruto versus Kiba. Kiba was a 
cracking his knuckles and said, I'm gonna enjoy beating you. While Naruto said, don't get too confident, but Kiba didn't care. And as the proctor said, fight, Kiba ran in on all fours with Akamaru following behind him. And Naruto sighed and said, how about you master your clan's ability before using it? He simply sidesteps Kiba and roundhouse kicks him in the face. And Kiba was mad and he said, man beast transformation. And Akamaru turned into Akiba as well and said, let's go Akamaru, fang over fang. And Naruto stood there with his hands in his pockets and Akamaru and Kiba were spinning in tight circles like a drill and kept going through Naruto over and over, unable to hit him and they became exhausted. Naruto looked up and said, done yet? Time to try out my own special attack, Key Blast. And a glowing purple sphere of energy appeared in front of Naruto's palm and he said, this is the end of the road and shot it towards the two. It moved too fast for them to dodge and even though it wasn't a direct hit, the explosion of the attack injured them both severely. And after the smoke cleared, the proctor said, Naruto Uzumaki wins. Ino was the loudest and cheered and Naruto went back up to the stands. So the other matches went about the same, Sasuke still had the curse mark sealed so he couldn't use ninjutsu but won in the end. But one thing that changed though was Ino versus Sakura. Ino won because of her training with Naruto and her better understanding of her clan's abilities. So with Team Dosu also out of the matches since you know Naruto defeated them earlier and they didn't make it to uh, the manor in time, the matchups for the finals would be a bit different. It's the usual Naruto vs Neji, Sasuke vs Gaara, Konkuro Shino, Shikamaru vs Temari, and an extra pair Tenten vs Ino. So the participants had a month to train for the third stage of the tuning exams. During this month, Naruto spent most of his time in his mindscape. Hit has seen Naruto progress alone so he decided to train him personally for this month and teach him some of the techniques that made him feared universally. So the one month went by fast and it was time to start the third stage. Everyone was there except Sasuke but you know they moved on without him. First it's Naruto vs Neji. As the match started, Neji and Naruto ran to each other and started trading blows. Naruto decided to be more active in this fight, but Neji thought this was an easy win. After all, Taijutsu is his specialty. So he started using his gentle fist technique, trying to hit his chakra points, but Naruto kneed Neji in the stomach, then got some distance. Neji quickly recovered and ran to Naruto, but Naruto said, time to try out this time lag and everyone in the stands was surprised when Neji was moving in slow motion. Naruto smiled and walked up to Neji elbowing him in the back and sent him falling to the ground and Naruto stomped on him again. The proctor walked up and flipped Neji over checking if he was conscious but nope he was out cold and the proctor called the match announcing Naruto as the winner. The crowd was in complete shock. Naruto won against the prodigy Neji. Hiyashi couldn't look out of shame and Hinabi said, how did Neji lose? And Hiyashi held his head high and got up and said, he was too weak and walked off. Next, Gara versus Sasuke. And like canon, he doesn't show up. He's still perfecting his new technique. So Hiruzen tells them to go on to the next matches and you know, they'll fight when he comes. So Konkuro versus Shino, of course, Konkuro forfeits as soon as the match starts, giving Shino the win. And people were confused why he did this. You know, he seemed completely capable of fighting, but it didn't matter if he forfeits. So we move on to Shikamaru versus Tamari. And this fight was well fought and after trying every possibility to use Shadow Paralysis to knock out Tamari, Shikamaru simply forfeited the match saying it would be too much of a drag to continue. Shikamaru's dad was who was watching, he just face palmed and said, this is such typical Shikamaru. So 
When it came time for Gara and Sasuke's fight, Sasuke still was nowhere to be found and he was about to get disqualified when in a cloud of smoke, Kakashi appeared with Sasuke ready to fight. So everyone clears the fighting area and it's just a proctor, Gara and Sasuke. He says fight and this goes basically similar to canon with Sasuke trying to outspeed Gara, but his sand defense proving to be too much. But soon after activating his Sharingan, Sasuke was starting to gain an upper hand on Gara. He was using some of Lee's um, abilities that he copied with his Sharingan to be able to attack Gara. And soon enough, after Gara was being pressured and pressured, he started to create a sand dome around him. And as it was closing, Sasuke tried to get a punch in, but he punched the outside of the dome and a bunch of spikes shot out of it and cut up his legs and arms, nothing too, you know, serious. Meanwhile, Tamari was watching and she was getting scared because she knows what this is doing. Gara is in the midst of his transformation into his Shikaku state. So after trying over and over to penetrate this dome Gara has created, Sasuke decided to pull out the technique that he's been working so hard on. So he got a bit of run up. He went up onto the walls of the arena. And once he was at the top, he crouched down and started weaving hand signs and stuck his hand down and said Chidori and ran and a ball of lightning basically started surrounding Sasuke's hand and he ran down with bolts of it shooting off. And people in the stands were wondering what this was, mainly um, members of the Konoha 12. So Guy was there explaining what this technique was because he has first hand knowledge of it because you know he is Kakashi's friend so he would know a lot about his technique. He said it was called Chidori or a lightning blade because it was said that Kakashi once used it to cut a bolt of lightning. Even I don't know how true that is but hey it's Kakashi I mean he could probably do it. So the Chidori went completely through Gara's dome defense and into his shoulder and Gara began screaming in pain and Tamari said no he's injured. So spikes began to form again on the dome causing Sasuke to jump back and Gara kept screaming blood my blood and soon the dome started crumbling away but Gara didn't look like his normal self. He was in the half Shikaku state and this commenced the start of the Konoha crush. So many ninjas started coming out from hiding and they put the entire stadium under a genjutsu. Only high level ninjas like Kakashi and Gai weren't affected but Genin like Sakura who knew how to get out of Genjutsu she just did release and this brought her out of it so she started waking a lot of different people up but by this time Hiruzen was in the barrier fighting Orochimaru and Sasuke was following Gara as he was like running away. So seeing this Sakura followed behind him and Naruto seeing the both of them was just face palmed and said uh, why do I always have to save the day? So he follows them as well. And so does she. Actually, a lot of, a lot of people start following. But yeah, Shino intercepts Konkuro and they fight. And on his way to Sasuke, Naruto took down Tamari. So when he finally arrives, he sees Sakura pinned to a tree and Sasuke on his last legs. And Gara came in with his sand arm and punched Sasuke across into a tree, knocking him out. Naruto sees this and was going to rush in but heard a voice say to him and this is hit by the way, let me take over, it's pretty boring in here. And Naruto raised an eyebrow but before he could even ask how that's done, hit took over his body. Just like how if too much of the Ninetales chakra flows through Naruto, you know, he could it could take over. Well, since Ki is flowing through Naruto which is from hit, he can take control in sort of the same way. So Hit starts stretching and cracking his fingers and looked at Gara and said, I've seen worse. And he immediately froze time completely and flew towards Gara, then used time barrage, basically hitting Gara with a fury of punches. And when time unfroze, Gara had multiple bruises all over his body and parts of his body were pushed in from the force of the punches. Shikaku couldn't even come out if he wanted to. 
that's how badly Gara was injured and Hit thought oh, might have went too far but he flew up and took Sakura and Sasuke and went to the hospital. Meanwhile the fight with Hiruzen nothing changes. Hiruzen unfortunately still dies to the hands of Orochimaru with the help of the first and second Hokage. But before he died, he managed to take away the ability for Urshimaru to use Jutsu. So his arms are still useless, but Kabuto came in and helped him return to one of his hideouts. So meanwhile, Hit still had control of Naruto's body and was going around taking down all of the infiltrating ninja from the sand. So after they were all taken care of and the bombs from around the villages were not detonated luckily, Hit gave Naruto back control of his own body but as he did, Naruto fell over in the streets unable to move because that's how much Hit exhausted his body and Naruto was not prepared for that. So a few hours later, Naruto woke up in the hospital with Kakashi and Ino uh, there waiting for him and Naruto was, wasn't even aware of where he was. So Kakashi explained the situation and what he actually did and Naruto was surprised that Hit's efficiency it was said he alone took down like 50 ninjas. So due to Hiruzen's death the elders were tasked to take care of the village and one of their missions were to find a new Hokage. So they enlisted the help of Team 7 to find Sonade since that was their best candidate in their eyes. Jiraiya is really nowhere to be found. He was sent on a mission by Hiruzen to investigate the claims of this up and coming group called the Akatsuki and if they were dangerous or not. So that's what he's doing. So in this, Team 7 is the one who sets out to find Sonade. But before that, let's see what are some of the things the elders had to do in the place of Hiruzen's absence. So first off, the glaring thing was the whole um, betrayal of their alliance between the sand and the leaf. But the sand found their Kazekage dead, so they were being tricked by Orochimaru this entire time. So the alliance is still in place, but it's very, it's not very strong at this point. I mean, if you were attacked by your best friend, I don't think your friendship would still be the same. Also, they coordinated rebuilding efforts of the damaged property, like almost the entire village had some effect from that attack. So with rebuilding underway and Team 7 sent out to find the next Hokage, I feel like that is where I'm going to be leaving this one off. So we last left off with the elders giving Team 7 the task of finding their next Hokage, Sonade. This search would be so much easier with Kakashi's Ninken but there's nothing around with Sonade's DNA on it because that's how long she's left the village. So they'd have to go at it the old fashioned way. They have to go around to any little store or bar or casino because they know she's addicted to that and take out a picture and ask if they've seen her before. So they do this to around 20 different stores and eventually they end up splitting up each of them having a picture of Sonade and going around showing them to see if they can get any leads. And soon when Team 7 rejoined to see if anybody had any information on Sonade's whereabouts, Sasuke actually found out some from these two merchants at a bar and they said that they played Sonade and won a lot of money in the next town over because they were having this huge festival so a lot of people were there. So that was their next stop for Team 7. A day goes by and they make it to the village and it's a huge festival like they're wondering what's the celebration and they go around to one of the merchants and ask and they said that this is the 50th anniversary of this town's luck and what they mean by that is basically like 50 years ago the land of fire was hit with a bunch of natural disasters like earthquakes, um, th uh, thunderstorms, just anything you can think of and this town specifically got zero damage from the surrounding area so that's how it got the nickname the town of luck and that's why Sonade was here to see if any of that luck could rub off on her in her gambling efforts but unfortunately not. So Team 7, they would go around trying to find um, Tsunade, but they eventually got tired and rented an inn to stay at while they searched for Tsunade. And Naruto and Ino got a room by themselves and you know they were uh, getting a bit friendly with each other. So as the days go by, Team 7 could not find Tsunade anywhere they look. 
So they decide to get a quick drink at this one bar. Yes, you know, t um, Sasuke, Ino, and Naruto are kids, but they have other stuff to drink at the bar. I don't know, just get some water. <laughs> so they come into the bar and they all sit down and the bartender asks what they would like. So they give him their orders and they're just waiting, sitting around. And out of the corner of his eyes, Naruto sees this blonde haired lady and she's like cussing out this guy saying that he cheated, yada yada yada. But then she relented and passed over this huge bag of something. He doesn't know what it is. But judging from the situation, it is probably money, like some coins. So Naruto watches as this lady just throws back a few shots of sake. And Naruto gets a closer look and he realizes that this looks awfully a lot like Sanade, like the, the color of the hair. He looks at the image he has, the photo he has, and looks back at Sanade and like keeps switching and he turns to Kakashi and he's like, uh, I think that's her. So Kakashi looks up and says, oh, Sanade. And he gets up and walks over and Sanade recognizes Jiraiya. I mean, wait, did I say Jiraiya? <laughs> he recognizes Kakashi almost instantly. And she says, oh, Kakashi, uh, what are you doing here? So Kakashi begins to explain the situation in the village and how they need her as the next Hokage. And Sanade is immediately like, no, I'm not becoming no Hokage. Kakashi tries convincing her, but Sanade is really adamant on the fact that she is not gonna do it. So Kakashi had to come up with some sort of bargain. And she's, he says that if she becomes Sanade, her entire debt will be wiped. And Sanade is like, oh, everything and Kakashi looks her in the eyes and says everything so hearing this Sonata needed no more convincing and was ready to go to the village right now and Shizune and like the little pig thing are just watching and Shizune just face palms like what happened to you know never wanting to go back to the leaf but she switched up so quickly but hey she has like millions in debt so she kind of has to agree so with that now, Kakashi calls over his team and he introduces them to Sanade and immediately Naruto sticks out to her because this is the son of the fourth. So she just says it's good to meet all of them and they sleep one more night before heading back to the leaf village. And that morning when they get up, they get a knock at the door. Well, Naruto and Ino in their room get a knock at the door. And when he opens it, it's not Itachi or Kisame. It's the sound four because they've came to retrieve Sasuke. Naruto looks at Jirobo who's towering over him and he says, where is Sasuke Uchiha? Naruto stopped for a second and then froze time. And when he did, he could feel the immense strain and he said, ugh. I've got to get used to this. So Naruto walks behind the, the sound four and he goes to Kakashi's uh, room and he unfreezes time and he tells Kakashi about the um, group of ninjas at his door. So Kakashi and Naruto run out and they face up against the sound four. And this is an easy matchup. The sound four get wiped with Kakashi basically taking care of them with his Sharingan activated and they do it so quickly before they could even like activate some of the higher forms of their curse mark. And Naruto helped out a lot. He one shot two of the members of the sound four with his deadly punch ability. And by the time they were all wiped out, Sasuke woke up from all the commotion. He came outside, but they were all unconscious. So Kakashi would seal their bodies into a skull to get ready to collect their bounties from the bingo book. And that's basically it. After they do that, they meet up with uh, Sonata the next day and head over to the Leaf Village. And meanwhile, in the Leaf, Itachi and Kisame did arrive. But the reason why they didn't um, ambush Naruto in his apartment is because they just didn't know where he was. When the both of them went to the leaf, the guy, um, you know, drove them away. There was no hints of where they were. So after Guy and uh, Kurenai and Asuma beat them up a bit, you know, they ran off and just didn't know where else to look. On their way back to the leaf, um, Sasuke, he's you know, jumping along the trees and he's feeling this urge to go to Orochimaru. He doesn't know who Orochimaru is, of course. He just feels this urge to get stronger. But after spending this much time with Team 7, Sasuke's um, hatred complex, it's starting to change. And he's seeing how hard work can really get him places. So he is going to be training a lot harder during the time skip. And speaking of the time skip, 
Team 7, they make it back and Tsunade gets announced the 5th Hokage and it's time for the time skip between Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. And during this time, Naruto would almost master all of Hit's abilities. He would basically become Hit. The only difference between them is their appearance. And simultaneously, Ino and Sasuke would get immensely stronger and they would be far more powerful than their Shippuden counterparts. With Sasuke training under Kakashi and learning a lot of lightning abilities and developing the Kirin as well and unlocking the three Tomoe Sharingan. And eventually, Tsunade would find a way to get the curse mark off of um, Sasuke so he doesn't have that to deal with. And Ino would train under Tsunade and she would basically be Sakura. She would have Sakura's immense strength and knowledge of medical ninjutsu. Actually, maybe even greater than Sakura because she would put much that much dedication into it, wanting to be more like Naruto. And she would also learn all of her clan abilities. So this would just put her over the edge. You know, Ino is incredible. So after the time skip, someone unexpected would come to the village. Jiraiya and he immediately went to the Hokage's office and first he was shocked to see Tsunade as the Hokage and also devastated by the death of Hiruzen. So Jiraiya after collecting himself said to Tsunade, I've gathered a lot on the Akatsuki and it was way worse than any of us thought. They're hunting down tail beasts to start something I heard them call the revival. And Tsunade asked what is being revived and Jiraiya looked out the window saying we don't know yet but what we do know is that they need the tail beast to do it. And Tsunade's eyes widened and she said you don't think? And Jiraiya nodded his head they'll be coming here soon. We know they have the first, second, fourth, fifth and sixth tails. They're efficient and send out strong ninjas to take down the Jinchuriki. I even saw one of their members take down the four tails with little effort. These, these guys are dangerous. And Tsunade sat back in her chair contemplating their next move when a ninja barged in into her office and Tsunade was going to tell him off saying they should knock next time but the ninja showed Tsunade a distress message from the sand. But it arrived way later than it was actually supposed to because the Akatsuki know about Naruto and over the three year time skip, he went on numerous missions and got the nickname the Assassin because none of Naruto's targets have survived. And the way he is described to most people, um, the Akatsuki see as some time space ninjutsu. They see him, you know, teleporting in and out. They see him, um, oh well, some claim that he's freezing time and like punching people, like all this crazy stuff. So all the Akatsuki can think of is space time ninjutsu. So they decided to change up their strategy and went out in groups of three to capture the tail beast so they can do it quickly and cause more destruction so word won't spread as quickly like for instance right now the letter that they got from the sand arrived way later in canon it was like three days and this time it's over a week so gara he's already dead and there's not really much the Leaf can do, so Sonade thinks it's best to convene with all of the leaders of the other villages, well, I mean, excluding Gara since, well, well, he's dead. But yeah, all the leaders of the other villages to convene and talk about what's the best next step to make. Because if they're not careful, this could be the rise of something nefarious, something greater than anyone could deal with. So Sonade sends out a message to all the other Kage to convene at the Land of Iron where they usually do these meetings and three days later, there they are. They're in this circular like room and all the Kages have their assistant standing behind them with the Raikage having B behind him and Sonade having Kakashi. The Mizukage openly asked, so what are we going to do about the Akatsuki? And the little old man, the Suchikage said, we need to get our tail beast back. And Sonade says, that's why we're here to discuss that. We don't know how or what this threat even is. And the fact that they're able to take down these tail beasts so efficiently, that means that they're people to be worried about. And I don't even know if we'll be able to do it, but together we might have a chance. And it, all the Hokages, they're murmuring to each other, like wondering, oh, why would I want to ally with the leaf? Yada, yada, yada. They've had some bad blood in the past. 
and after a bit of arguing, Sonade was about ready to convince all of them to join her alliance idea, but that's when a massive smoke bomb went off in the room, and on the ceiling stood a masked man, and he announced himself as Madara Uchiha. The entire room was in disbelief, Madara died a, a long time ago, but he was there right in front of him, and of course, you know, we know this isn't actually Madara, it's just Obito. And Obito looked at the Raikage and he saw that he, the eight tails was in, you know, was there. And he said, oh, I'll be taking you. And the Raikage is wondering what he's talking about. And then he activates his uh, Mangekyo Sharingan and using Kamui to send the Killer B to his, um, you know, his alternate dimension. And seeing B disappear, the Raikage asks, what did you do with him? And Madara said, I declare war on the shinobi world. And he started to disappear into a swirl, but the Raikage tried to blitz him and punch him, but he was long gone. Tsunade declared that we need to work together to be able to stop Madara, but the Raikage was so angry he said, screw your damn alliance, I'll take care of this myself. But the Raikage would soon find out that was the worst decision he could ever make. So Sonade, he she's not getting through to any of them, so she's ready to return to the leaf for this pending attack because the Nine Tails is the only Jinchuriki to have that hasn't been captured yet. So the leaf is going to be the place that's going to be attacked next, but they would never realize the scale of this attack. So three days go by, and Sonade has reached the leaf, and um, you know the Eight Tails is extracted from B. But instead of any individual going to attack the Nine Tails, they're ready to revive the Ten Tails right now. But they still need the Nine Tails, so how would that be possible? And that's where Rinkaku and Genkaku come into this. They revive them, and because they spent, I think it was like months in the belly of the Nine Tails eating its flesh, they absorb some of its chakra. So using the little amount of the Nine Tails chakra they have, another three days go by, and they're ready to revive the Ten Tails. And so they do and send it on a course to the Leaf Village. And there's no time to form the alliance between all the nations because they just don't all agree. So the Leaf is going to be at this one alone. So Naruto is in the Leaf and it's clearly apparent that there is a massive beast using its arms to drag its way to the Leaf. And you know, they're both like watching this from the top of a building and people are being evacuated and you know, people are panicking. So Ino, she grabs onto Naruto's arm saying she loves him, just in case this is the last time they'll be seeing each other, but Naruto wasn't going to let that happen. Naruto's consciousness went into his mindscape and he saw Hit looking really serious, like Hit is never this serious, he's just chill. But Hit was also worried about the Ten Tails, but he had been devising a plan. He's been talking to the Nine Tails and they've come to a bit of an understanding. If the Nine Tails boosts Naruto's body with its chakra, he'll be able to make another dimension, you know, similar to the one that he travels through to do time skip and, you know, all those other cool abilities. That, but he's going to be using it to seal the Ten Tails away. So, Naruto thought this was a crazy idea, but hey, if it worked, it could save a lot of people. So, Naruto's eyes opened to see Ino and he said, I have an idea, and he begins to run towards where the Ten Tails will first hit the village, you know, where it was coming from, and he stood on the wall surrounding the leaf, and he said, Nine Tails, ready? And he heard a grunt, and its chakra began flowing through Naruto's body, and he began to float off the ground and charge up his key, preparing to open this dimension. And as the Ten Tail was coming closer and closer, Naruto flew towards it and reached out and touched the head of the Ten Tails, and then it just disappeared. People in the village, the Akatsuki, they were watching and they didn't know what to think, Why? what was that? And Naruto, he fell out of the sky and landed on the ground and he was almost drained completely. That took a lot out of him because, you know, using his first dimension was, you know, hard enough. Now he has to make another one and to seal this powerful beast and to, you know, keep it sealed. That is the struggle. So Naruto is on the ground and he's looked up and he feels his body. It's tensing up. He feels like he's ready to die. 
But Naruto's fight wasn't done yet because the Akatsuki saw that their ultimate attack failed so they had to do it themselves. So they rushed the leaf and an all out brawl ensued with Sanade, Jiraiya, Kakashi, you know all these strong ninjas going up against the Akatsuki and when Naruto recovered he eventually joined the fight as well and when he joined the fight it was done for the Akatsuki because Naruto would seal them away with the tentails and this pushed him over to the edge and he fell over unconscious because this is pushing his body way too far, something hit with struggle with. Naruto wasn't unconscious for long, only a few minutes and Sanade put a miniature version of Katsumi? Yeah, her slug on Naruto to heal him. So he actually recovered pretty quickly and when Naruto like opened his eyes, villagers were surrounding him and they were cheering for Naruto. Naruto took on that deadly beast with like little effort like that's incredible so naruto would go on to become even stronger and revered in all of the nations and with like all the tail beasts being trapped within like the ten tails and the ten tails being trapped in naruto's sort of time seal um the leaf would become the most powerful nation because they are the only ones with a tail beast and the leaf would eventually start to expand their territory going into some of the smaller areas like the land of grass and you know this is headed by naruto you know they had to fight to get these lands so naruto would be at, in the front lines fighting for the village and after around five years sanade would retire from her position as hokage and naruto would become the sixth hokage and for the rest of Naruto's life, he lived pretty peacefully because, I mean, who would attack the leaf at this point when they're this huge and they have one of the most deadly ninjas comparable to Madara in his, you know, killing his body count, basically, the amount of people he's killed. Like, you'd be dumb to attack the leaf. That's like going into a police station to attack it with a plastic fork or something. So Naruto would have enough peace to, you know, develop a family with Ino and they would become even stronger than him. But that is where I'm going to be leaving this one off. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. And if you liked it, like. And if you like my content in general, consider subscribing. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next What If.